we have sorted out all of those issues. It's Urban Pack Rat forward slash diary. What's going on, people? This is like the third freaking video I did. I started this channel August 6, 2009. And this is like either the, the second or the third. I can't remember because I deleted one. And um, it's, it's really, really interesting how it'll be five years in a very short period of time. Well, there's a few announcements. Bunch of stuff's about to happen. Making some big changes. So we're going to get rid of that guy. Well, I'm going to leave that up there. Uh, because this actually goes to the core of what I'm going to talk about today. As you can see, I'm not the guy I am the now back then. I was scared shitless. Uh, for one point, I was doing videos in the basement. Then I came upstairs and I was doing videos. And it's a process. You know, it's it's really, really a process. So let's uh, pop out of that. And let's open this guy. Here we go. Okay. That is not what I expected to happen. <laughs> oh, let's put that there. And let's do this here. All right. What really started this was the last session of 30 days to $10,000 that I did. And this is something that's happened pretty much since I've been doing webinars. I'll do the webinar and then I'll get all of these questions about everything under the sun, many things not even pertaining to the webinar. And it just goes on and on and on. And also, I noticed that uh, I was having lunch with a friend and we were just talking about where people are. I'm not trying to be impolite or even indelicate, but if you're only making two, three, four hundred bucks a week now, it is a mental stretch for you to go like, well, I'm making two, three, four hundred bucks now and I'm going to make about ten thousand dollars in 30 days. For many people, that's just not plausible. And it's not because you don't have the skills. It's not because you don't have the talent. It's because what I predicated the hustler mindset on, having the right mindset. That is the biggest part of all of this. And it really, really made me sit back and readjust what I'm doing. Because essentially... Me giving you information that you're not ready for is just pointless. I mean, it sounds good and it sounds nice, but it, it's really, really pointless. Also, something else that I learned. 30 days to $2,500 was an extreming success because it was action-oriented and it's not that big of a jump. If you're making 500 bucks a week, that's 2000 a month. It's, it's like, okay, you know, that's more plausible. That actually works for most people. And part of the business course is giving people what they need, what they want, where they are. I mean, I can look at you and say, hey, you, you have the capacity to make 100000 per month. But if you do not believe it, if you don't feel it, you think I'm full of shit, it is not going to work, even though you have the ability. See, it's not about ability. It's about perception. Perception's everything. And I decided to just, like I said, reformat everything. Uh, 30 days to 2,500. 30 days to 10,000. Those 30 days to 2,500 bucks is gone. 30 days to 10,000 is in process. And I'm going to do that. What those are, are just paid courses now. That way, if you're ready... Even if you're not ready, if you spend the money, you're going to put forth more effort. So those are paid courses. Those will not be out in the public. Uh, those will be in the groups. And let's talk about the groups. There's Hustler University, which is open to everybody. Then there is 100K in 12. And then there's the Hustler Mastermind Group. What's the big difference? Hustler University, you brand new. You are and brand new or intermediate. You've got a few, no time in the hustle game up to maybe a year or two. Then you're making money. You know, you're making a few thousand a month. You you believe, <laughs> you believe. So 100K to uh, 100K and 12, that's more for you. And 
Hustler Mastermind Group is strategy. It's about building stuff. It's where I'm going to open up my sandbox and toolbox and just show you all kind of stuff. I'll talk about those later, but I'm going to do this and I haven't decided. This is the first day. I don't know. Like I said, it just depends on how this goes because this is beta. And one of the things that I tell people and if you're coming into the room is thank you. Welcome. Welcome is don't be afraid to take a chance. That is really one of the biggest reasons that many people are not successful. They, they are afraid to take a chance. And the second reason they take a chance and they go boom, flat, something bad happens and they're embarrassed. Just like, you know, you always hear these things like if a man gets hurt once real bad, he'll never, ever love another woman. Well, guess what? There are women who are the same way. People are people. Stop with the uh, stereotype and stuff. Essentially, there are many people, male and female. They do something once and they fuck up. It's over. It's not happening again. They're never going to put their little tender parts out there to be spanked by life again. So those are two reasons, fear and making a mistake. And we're going to work on that. And this is just pretty much what I talked about. Um, essentially, I noticed the questions were going on and on and on. I could be here eight hours a day answering questions. And with that, I... I have no problem answering questions. Uh, my commitment to you is I'll show up, you ask a question, I'm answer it to the best of my ability. But when your questions get to the point where they take 15, 20, 30 minutes to answer, you need to go ahead and purchase a consult. That's what you need to do. And I'm going to tell you exactly why you need to do it. You can have 30 people on this webinar ask the same question. And there is certain information that will fit everyone. It's like one size fits all. And then there's certain information that will not. I was talking to someone yesterday who's been a client two months. And I found out something really interesting about this person and their business. I didn't know. You have to talk to people and dig and pull and dig and pull to get the really good stuff out sometimes because many people think some of their special talents are unremarkable because she was like, I didn't really think that was that special. She's already made 500 bucks today from doing it, but she didn't think it was that special. We're taught and I don't know if it's the Protestant work ethic and I'm not going to try to insult anyone's religion, but my opinion, one Glendon Cameron, the religion has many people fucked up in this country because you have people who are afraid to give themselves not a party, not some extravaganza, but just to simply say, hey, I'm good at doing this. For many people, that's huge. That's just like, I can't say that. You ever compliment somebody and it's like, wow, that's a nice shirt. And it's like, this whole thing. I mean, that, that stuff drives me crazy. It's gotten to the point where people are working, in my opinion, too hard to be humble and not working hard enough to appreciate the gifts they have. Because when you do that, well, this old thing or I was nothing, you know, you're deflecting your greatness and your ability. I don't know socially where this stuff comes from. I guess why I said the Protestant work ethic, because in the, I think the 1920s, it was like that's where idle hands or the devil's workshop so if you're just working your ass off all the time then you can't get into trouble and for some people that's true if they're busy then life goes well and they don't get in trouble i think there's some folks that don't know how to entertain themselves when there's nothing to do but with this it's going to be i'm going to answer your questions you know any business question we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff and going back to what i was saying this is the first day i may do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I may do it every day. I don't know, but it's going to happen at least every Monday. That much I do know. That's why it's beta. It's going to happen every Monday, 3 p.m., 4 p.m. That much I do know. It may happen every day. And if you want to know what I'm going to do, you need to be on the email list. How do you get on the email list? The sign up is under every video on YouTube. Just hit that box. Boom. Get the free ebook. You're on the list. So, that's where I'm at with that. Don't know yet. I'm working on a lot of stuff. Also, let's see. As we go on, this is another problem. And hopefully, and this is the reason that 30 days to 2,500 bucks was so successful. It was action oriented. You had to do something. You just couldn't like, 
and I see this with a lot of groups, and uh, it's making me change the focus of my groups. Uh, information comes across the screen. Currently, I am on a Facebook moratorium except for my groups. Uh, I'm not posting Jack on my personal page because I start measuring my productivity, and I just noticed. I mean, Facebook is a big time suck. You can go in there and like, I'll be here for a second. Next thing you know, two hours are gone. So I've cut Facebook out on the personal stuff. I will interact and I'll talk in the groups, but my personal page, nothing's happening. Because if you look at your time, today is Tuesday, April the 21st, 2014. It's three o'clock or something. This is it. Once this day is gone, you're not getting this day again. You, if you live long enough, you'll get another Tuesday next week, but you're not getting this Tuesday back again. So what you do on this Tuesday is very pivotal to your success long term, because I'm going to invoke Miss Sally Mae Jones, who was one of my neighbors growing up. You know, older people were always talking about you know, final plans. It's like they already had their grave. They already had their tombstone picked out and all this other stuff. It was just like, yep, yeah, I'm just waiting on the dirt nap. And she always said this. She said, if you live long enough, you're going to get old. And I thought about it. If you, you know, and that's what many people say, oh, God, it's going to take so long. I mean, it's going to take two years. Oh, shit, it's going to take five years. If you live long enough, those two years, those three years, those five years are coming and going. And if you're not doing something, if you're not working on it, because many people feel like I call it a lottery syndrome. That all of a sudden, there's going to be this magical day. Then, boom, you win the money or this person comes in your life. All this stuff just happens and then your life gets cleared up. That's a fantasy. That's a delusion. If today, April 21st, after this webinar, you take this information and actually start doing something. And even if it's just one thing, then tomorrow, Wednesday, you do something else. Then Thursday, you do something else. And then Friday, you do something else. If you do something every day, 365 days in a year, that's 365 action points. How could you not be successful at some point if you're doing that? That's the thing. That's why when I wrote my first book, the storage auction book, I was saying, forget about, you know, Home runs, which is the big unit, the nice stuff, the the ooh wee type unit. You're like, oh god, man, you wouldn't believe what I got. Oh man, man, you just wouldn't believe it. There was just like diamonds falling out of every box. I'm, I'm just like, we just couldn't believe. Great to talk about. Rarely happens, and if it happens every month, more than likely you're not going to be able to live because you're spending all your money chasing those kind of units. So you may even just balance out every month. Get started. Stay started. Okay, so put that there and <laughs> okay, there it is. I hope it's going to open back up. Looks like it. Oh, that is too funny. Hold on a second. Ah, here it is. There we are. I'm like, you know, it just kind of like wanted to get the hell on. Okay, uh, another thing. Let's talk about the channel before I get too deep. This is the new focus of the channel. How to make money, how to build business. If it's not about making money or it's not about building a business, it will not be on this channel. So all the fuckery is going to go here. <laughs> all of the stories are going to go here. This is where everything is going. So, you know, a lot of people love the stories. The stories are coming back. They're just going to be here. If you want them, I'll let you know. Uh, don't know if I'm going to put them out on the list because the list is just for business stuff only. But for folks who like the stories, this is where they're going to be. Uh, here's one I put up last week. Got to check. There, there'll be more. There's going to be a lot of good stuff. So that's where the stories are. And let's see. Yeah, I will actually do this. I'm not going to send it out now because everybody's not here yet. Uh, it is funny. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. There we go. All right. I'm not going to send it out just yet, but I am going to get rid of that. And yeah, get rid of that. 
and I do believe Oh, another thing. Yes, I've, I've got notes here. Everyone's like, what's happening with the books? I am doing something different. All the books are coming out, but I am making a radical pivot because one weekend I was brainstorming. I came up with this plan. I think it's genius. I, I really do. I think it's genius. I don't know, but once again, I'm going to try it out. All books are coming out. There's actually going to be more books than you can believe are coming out. But I had to revamp my workflow totally. So that's what's happening with that and other channel. OK, how to make money. And now we're off to questions. If you've got any question about business, OK, business, shoot, and I will answer it. So everyone's saying good afternoon. How you doing? What's going on, Betty? How you doing, Roger? What's up, Joe? Uh, let's see. I am looking. The sound and everything should be going lane. Joseph. I love this last name, Carducci. It just makes me happy. You gotta see it before you believe it. True. And that's one of the things that I've run into with many people who are extremely talented. They have the ability. They just don't believe. And another thing that happens is many of these folks are beat down by someone in their life that's supposedly close to them. It could be grandparents, parents, brother, sister. That's another part of this. Uh, let's see. Someone wants. All right. Let's let's talk about this. I, I, every day in my email box, I get people who send me their email address and their phone number and I'm really happy that you know you want to talk to me I think it's really really cool this is the problem I don't really have the time to talk to someone like that I used to when I first started in 2009 I can't do it also when you send me your email address or your phone number and just say hey just talk I have no idea what we're even talking about I don't even know if we can help each other so if you want to talk the consult is the best way to go and uh, I think my stuff disappeared. It is Monday. Yep, Monday the 21st. Yep, I screwed up, but hey. Let's see, man, I'm hating you. This is Betty. You hit the nail on the head with the PWE. That was, <laughs> was my upbringing. Anything that was open-ended and creative was deemed melodrama. I played two instruments, but I was in the orchestra, and that was a purpose. I made the comment about out of hands within the last me. Uh, religious indoctrination, and once again, I'm not hating on anyone's religion. I'm not saying you shouldn't be what you should be, but it messes a lot of people up in terms of being successful. There's actually what's called a poverty. There's, there's this notion that there's nobility in being pov in poverty because Jesus was poor. It's like, well, you know, I'm poor, so I'm like Jesus. And I'm just like, that never worked for me, even when I was 11. I just never believed in that stuff. Uh, Joseph, how do you manage your time and stay productive? It's the power of six. In short, uh, I'll give you an example of what I did this morning. I And this, this may sound crazy, and everyone can't do this. But I woke up and I immediately went to work. I didn't even brush my teeth. I know that sounds real nasty, but I am getting back into, like I said, there's a bunch of books coming out, but the books have to be done. And the only way to do the, bu the books is to get up and do it. Uh, today, probably up to 2,500 words and my goal is 5,000. We'll see what happens. But uh, the plan is to get up to X amount of words by May. So I'm starting now. And we'll see how the night pans out. But essentially, you have to actually ask yourself, what's the most value use of your time? Going back to getting rid of Facebook. Um, it was just becoming a time suck. So no more of post. You know, if you see me posting on my personal page on Facebook, you can bitch slap me. Um, that series about staying off of there. Essentially, you have to focus. You have to cut out distractions. And the best way to do this is to sit down and write down your goals. I mean, write them out, look at them and actually go through maybe four or five drafts. Because the first one, just put everything that you want to do on there. Then the second one, just like, eh, I don't really want to do that. And just rank. What's the most important thing? Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Chuck, sorry, G, but you're a wealth for information. This has made you a bit of a guru to many people. That cracks me up when I hear the word guru. That's why you asked all sorts of things. You have a great mind, so many want to know what do you think on a particular subject. Thanks. I appreciate it. Joe, how, how and where do I find these storage auctions? The simplest way, and this is something I get to do. I'm going to just do this since I got people online. Uh, this is this is one of the reasons I love uh, Gumroad. I love Gumroad like nobody's business. I can do this. So what I'm going to do for you is send this. Discuss all that stuff in the book. Essentially, you've got to call them. Uh, there's these websites that have all the auctions. But this is the thing. I'm going to send that and pop out of there. You have to call them. Uh, there's what storage treasures. There's all just Google storage auctions, and you'll see these websites that sell these lists of when the auctions are happening. But this is the problem. When that list comes out, and the list is the storage facilities have to find an eviction notice. Essentially, it's an eviction process. That's what it is. It's a lien notice against the holder of the storage unit. So they have to evict them, and that's a public record deal. So they have to advertise that they're doing this process. And that's when the list is generated of because it's whatever their cutoff is. It's like, OK, we've got 20 people who haven't paid their rent and they put them in lien status. That is what the list is made of. The first week that list comes out, usually half the people pay up. So you just having a list is not enough. You have to call because you can go by that list and you're just like, hey, they're going to have 20 units and you get there and they have none. <laughs> it happens it happens all the time that's why you got to develop some kind of workflow i addressed that with the books they're coming but uh i'm gonna uh, put some more information out later in the week Corey, i am selling books on amazon.com should i go fb or stay self-fulfilled that's a great question. Uh, how many books do you have? Because this is the thing. Amazon and eBay, they're going to this place where you get dinged for not shipping your stuff out in a timely manner. If it was me doing it again, because we did our books, you know, Merchant Fulfilled. Merchant Fulfilled is when you ship your own stuff. Amazon Fulfilled is FBA is when you ship the stuff to many of their warehouses and they ship it out for you. You still have to list it. You still have to put in the condition of the items. You don't get around that. You just don't have to do the shipping part. Uh, I would ship everything if it was a book to Amazon FBA and for the following reason. You only have to worry about finding and listing. You don't have to worry about shipping. You don't have to buy shipping supplies and you don't have to store anything. So essentially, say you live in an apartment and within a year, if you really hustle, you can get 20, maybe 30,000 books up on Amazon and you're still in your apartment and you don't have to worry about the shipping and all this other stuff. Um, I think it's one of the best short term hustles there is. Jelani, I have an international business company. I'm thinking about having it function as a holding company. Hey, if that works with your future goals, do it. Roger, I'm currently using my dead time to do more work on projects. What is dead time? Is that like free time? What's up, Cody from Dallas, Texas? Louis. Louis the seller. Glennon, I buy all kinds of sources, flea markets and thrift stores, yard sales, garage sales, and other online. But I never drop ship. What is your opinion about drop shipping? I would run from drop shipping. I understand that there's a handful of companies that do it and do it well, but this is the problem. If you're drop shipping from your website and someone orders something from your website and they don't have it, you refund their money and you just life goes on. If you're drop shipping on Amazon and eBay and it happened too many times, they're going to get rid of your account. And too many times could be three or four. 
drop shippers are notoriously unreliable in the regard that they're trying to get as many people as possible to sell their product because they, as long as it sells they don't care if it runs out that's it's great they'll get more but that can put you in a bad situation only way i would drop ship if i was doing it from my website where if something went wrong i didn't have to worry about losing my amazon account or my ebay account roger what apps do you use to manage your time uh pen and a sheet of paper i don't, I don't have any apps I, I should clarify that my life's a little structured really different from most people i don't have a job i don't have uh, any prescribed schedule it's a lot easier for me because i don't have the normal pressures that many of you do I don't have to go to a job. I don't have to deal with traffic. I don't, I don't have that stuff. I don't even have a dog. I don't even have to walk, you know, choo-choo, you know, and go pick up his droppings and stuff. So I have an incredible amount of freedom that most people don't have. Chuck, how do you know if and when you should buy someone else's business? Any particular rules or ideals? Oh, hell yeah. Typically, if you're going to buy a business, the premium is usually twice or three times its annual income. Most people try to go for the annual income level. Now, if you're going to buy a business, first thing you need to do is know about that business. You need to know as much about that business as possible. Preferably, if uh, you are not in the habit of buying businesses and you have a lot of partners and people to do stuff for you. I would just sit down with the owner and say, hey, you might have spend a week with you as your shadow. And also the big question is, why are you selling this business? If it's a legacy thing where, hey, I'm getting ready to go and I want the kids to have this chunk of money or I want to cash out. Makes plenty of sense as long as the books look good. If it's a fire sale, this is where it gets interesting. Many people like, oh, no, run. No, 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 no. Don't run. If it's a fire sale or there's something funky. You get that business at a premium. Say they're asking five hundred thousand, but you find out due to your due diligence that something screwed up. You get it for a hundred G's, and then you restore it to its former glory. Just a few guidelines. John, best way to market a business with a two hundred monthly budget. Uh, this is kind of one of those questions I'm talking about. What kind of business? <laughs> what kind of products? Where are you? That's that's not enough information. Justin, is blogging still a good way to start off making money, considering inspirational life issues, social blog, and doesn't seem like that would be a good way to make a big money early on? I would say absolutely not. You are better off starting a YouTube channel, a podcast, or a Facebook group. Blogs are number in the millions. And the thing is, Let's say you go ahead and you create this blog and it's wonderful and it's awesome. You've got this great theme. It's got a few twicks and, you know, there's a little squirrel that comes out and says, welcome to Justin's blog. Right. How do you get people there? And what you want to do, uh, considering inspirational life issues, social issues, that's all over the place. I'm not saying you can't do it and you can't do it. Well, the thing is, you've got to figure out a way to get people to that blog. There's got to be some unique selling proposition to get them there. Otherwise, you'll just be another person with a blog and ask yourself this. Are you able to write one blog post a week? And this, this is an exercise for you. The, this blog you want to do, right? Don't don't buy the domain name. Don't do any of this stuff. Just sit down every week and say, hey, I'm going to write an inspirational post. And if you can't make it to the end of the month, don't blog. Ricky. There are only 24 hours in a day. How do I how do you get everything in the time when there's never enough time? Ricky, 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 there is enough time. What you're not doing is prioritizing and you're not learning how to use that wonderful two word, two letter word called no. You've got to make decisions like, is this worth my time? Is this worth doing or is this not worth doing? If getting your business off the ground means that you don't watch any TV for the next year, so be it. I mean, you've got to make those kind of decisions. The time is there. Nobody gets a 20. You know, I don't have 30 hours a day and this other guy doesn't have 40 hours. We only get 24. It's what you do with those 24 hours that makes the difference. <laughs> Guru cracks me up, Roger. 
Tony, I thought the Power of Six had worked really hard one day alternating component. Then I guess one day off and seven or something trying to build a schedule. Two helter skelter now. If you do the Power of Six Monday through Friday, you'll be more productive in the month than you've been in the last quarter or maybe even last year. If you do it right, you can take weekends off and not penalize yourself. Isaiah, there was a costly bottleneck in my hustle, but I realized that the bottleneck service could be turned into a business service. Do you have any suggestions on how to build an email or contact list to sell this service to? Okay, I'm a little confused. Build an email contact list. It really depends on the service. Essentially, you know, just to start simple, if you want to build a list, you got to find people that want what you have, which means you've got to do some research. You have to go out there and, you know, maybe spend a month saying, okay, is this something that people want? And then after that, you start asking them for money. And if they pay you money, then start building the list. Chris. Friday's session, I asked about dream killers and how to deal with them. Yesterday, just told my ex-wife what she could do with her negative Nelly bullcrap. I felt immediately like I was walking on sunshine. Thank you, Glenda, for the advice she gave me on Friday. Negative people are emotional vampires. And th this is my take on negative people. Because this is something that I've experienced. When I am extremely freaking happy, I can't hate on anybody. People cut me off. I don't hunk. Folks are rude to me. It rolls off my back. So I really work hard on being happy. People who are really negative, bitter, mean, diabolical, there's something going on in their life that they're not really happy with and they're trying to share it with you. And, you know, I've had family members that I had to really distance myself from because the negativity was just, it was, I mean, it was so thick sometimes you could just walk on it. And it was because these people have not had the courage to go ahead and try to live life on their own terms. So if you're trying to do it and understand, you don't have to be doing it to get the hate. You just have to be trying. <laughs> That's all you have to do. You just have to be trying. Who do you think you are? You've outgrown your upbringing. Well, you think you're better than us because, you know, you, you wrote a book. I mean, seriously. So. My advice is if you have people that you love, you know, just have a talk with them. It's like, look, you know, I really love you. However, uh, I'm going to put a little distance between us and this because your attitude is negative. It could go very badly or it could go well. But I've had those conversations and they went well and they went bad. And you just have to really put your mental health above their needs and desires because i got this video up and i'm gonna i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it uh let's see definitely gonna do it because uh this came from dealing with one of my clients and i'm just gonna it was wow this is not as controversial as i thought it was gonna be you don't have to watch the ad but uh i essentially you can watch it whenever you uh, you want to get to it. I'll send that out to everybody. But essentially, you you have to really really guard your mental health. Uh, Chris is saying with auctions you can start with public storage. Just go to your local public storage and they will give you the trail dates for the year. But yes, call because they do move auction dates and they can yeah and they cancel them. Christina, I, okay, Roger, I teach, so there's time for me to create my own products, gotcha, Shane, I was thinking of making a website for a barter network in my hometown, what features would be good to have this website that would make it more attractive to users than a site like Craigslist, Shane, don't make the website, this is what you do, you go to your businesses, you go to people you know, and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing a barter club, and this is the requirements, whatever you've got in your mind, do it in person and do it with people because you'll find out very quickly if it's going to work or not. Because if you can get a group of people to meet or it's like, hey, you know, 
I've got this stuff or I'm thinking, you know, if you can get 20 or 30 people like, yeah, Shane, that's good. Then build a website. Many people build websites, actually rent store space, buy products and have no idea who the hell they're going to sell to and then wonder why it failed. I'm serious. This is common. This is very, very common. So don't build a website. Go out and see if you can make money with this thing before you build a website. Websites are websites are features of your business that help you be more efficient. So essentially you get to the point where you have enough business to do a website because it's like, hey, I can't take these orders. I can't organize this. Go to the website, then do it. Um, and Craigslist is going through a lot of changes. So it's not real hard to be unlike them. Uh, Rachel says the audio is breaking up. Uh, is anyone else experiencing any problems? Chuck, how do you find a specific consultant for a business you want to get into? I suppose you could talk to a current manager or owner of said business if they would talk, but to know this all involved, say I want to start a car wash or snow removal business or detailing business. And once again, I wouldn't hire a consultant. I would, I would get a job in that business. You want to do a car wash? Just go ahead and get the tiles and buff and pretend you're a Mexican. I'm not trying to be offensive, but that's the only people that seem to be working at car washes around here. Um, go work at the car wash. Find a detail business. Get hired. You're going to get more information working at that job for a week than you would talking to a consultant for uh, eight hours. You will find out so many things. Rachel, could you share a link? Power of Six is part of 30 Days to 2500. Um, I'm Like I said, all that stuff is now paid because due to these questions and the way this thing is rolling, even more people are showing up. This is, a, I guess, a better format. But those things are going to be paid products. Uh, like at the end of this, I'll send out a link for everyone that wants it. Roger, pen and paper. Wow, I do that. Just end up chopping down a lot of trees. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here with my list of, for this webinar. It just helps me. I mean, if you want to use an app or some of these productivity tools, cool. But it works well for me. Terrence, thanks for the drop set for information. What method could I get items for cheap to sell on Amazon or eBay? You could walk around your town, and a lot of people don't do this. Look for businesses that are closing. There's a target here in Duluth, Georgia. I actually saw it. They're they're moving in or something. They're going out of business. If you walk in there with a bunch of cash and it's like, hey, can I? Have, where's the manager? And just say, look, this is the deal. I know you're going out of business. Can you make me a deal? He's going to say yes or no. You go find places that are going out of business. Go to Craigslist. Go to the business section. Frequently, you'll find businesses that are like removing. Boom. You can get stuff real cheap. I got this desk that I'm using and this chair that I'm sitting in for a hundred bucks. I used to sell the desk that I'm using for eight hundred bucks. And this chair was probably three fifty. And they were damn near new when I got them. Cody. Hello, Mr. Cameron. I have a question. I'm an artist and producer. I also have an interest in starting an urban snapback and strapback hat line. I have a passion for music and fashion. Thank God I'm trying to buy some transportation for myself this Thursday. Meanwhile, I work at Walmart, live with my grandmother. As far as the hat line goes, I have great ideas and sketches, but honestly, I don't know where to start in order to physically create these hats. I would like to create these hats, uh, one source of income, to produce music, another source of income, in order for me to be free of working for Walmart and being able to be a full-time artist with two streams of income. The hat line is so great that I know that it's going to work regionally and locally on the urban scene. Any suggestions? And also, thanks for inviting me to this webinar. Sure. Number one, you're going to have to pick one. Are you going to do music or are you going to do hats? Because music and being good as a music producer, musician, is an incredibly time-consuming endeavor. So pick one and work on it and work on it. All right, and give you an example. Like you want to get the hats made. There are places in town that you can have the hats made. This is what you do. You take your whatever you think is your best design, spend some money, and have 10 hats made. Or... 
even better, you you get one hat made, take a picture of it, and email it to all your friends and everyone you think would love this hat, and say, "Look, I'm starting this clothing line. This is going to be the first product. You want to? You, would you pre-order?" And if they say, "Hell no," then that design is not as hot as you think it is, <laughs> or it could be your price. And how do you do pricing? Say the hat costs you six bucks. You want to sell it for eighteen because you're going to have the cost of uh, buying it. You're going to have the cost of administration. And then, of course, you want to make some profit. So that would be my advice. You got to pare that down because trying to do both of those things, I just see this being really hard. Louis, FBA has stopped my wife from yelling at me because of all the inventory that was taking up space in my home. It has allowed me to reclaim lots of space and has saved my marriage. I don't know why I'm happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, you can FBA gives you the ability to sell like you have 5000 square feet and you still in your home. I mean, just from that standpoint alone, it can be very beneficial. Corey, hey, G dog, I'm starting on eBay right now selling trading cards. How long should I stay on eBay until I get my own site? First of all, let's go step back a little bit. What you're going to get your own site for? I mean, this whole thing with your own site is, once again, you got the big issue is traffic. That's the reason eBay can act like the 8,000 pound evil bitch is because they know that this can be really interesting on getting, you know, getting traffic to your site. I would say sit down and develop a plan because, you know, you're on eBay, you're selling trading cards. That's a notoriously hard business to be successful in because the knowledge that you need to have and just think about that a little bit more. Christina, I've purchased several units, so I have tons of boxes, bags, etc. to sort through. Should I hire someone to help me with the sorting? I'm afraid I won't make enough money to pay the employee. Ooh, ooh, okay. Let's let's stop. This is the problem with hiring someone. All right. If you're gonna hire someone, hire someone you know well. Also, hire someone that doesn't have money issues. One of the problems with sorting stuff in storage units is people pack crazy. You can have the jewelry box with the pampers and the jewelry in a little plastic bag over by the bullets. It's ridiculous. And it doesn't take much for someone to go, oh, this is nice and slip it in their pocket. And also, let's talk about sorting. You've got several units. Just a quick way to sort and not kill yourself if it's just you. And I think it's just you. So every day you're going to take a bag. You're just going to go through that bag and you're going to like trash, flea market, eBay, Amazon. And you're just going to spend an hour on that every day consistently. That's the key. Everyone likes to do this. You know, I did 12 hours a day. I felt like I got a lot done. Then the next day, you're dog tired and you don't want to do nothing. Just consistently bite off of that pile and go through your stuff. Uh, John, best way to market a service business with a 200 monthly budget in New York City. What kind of service? See, that's one more question. Uh, Roger, any thoughts on the Flappy Bird app phenomenon? The guy in Vietnam making 50000 a month. Apparently, he was making money from the ads, but somehow he pulled that because there was some copyright infringement stuff going on. I think it was great. Dude was, I mean, he's, he made millions before he shut it off. So if you can make apps, I would say go for it. Uh, Tion, hey, Glennon went to a transcendental meditation overview last week. We'll start the course next month. Tr meditation will help you deal with a lot of stress, a lot of stress. Corey. Also, do you have any ideas how to increase my sales online? Sales of what? Louis, I'm a strong believer in customer service. I go extremely out of the way to make my customer happy, which includes refunding and letting them keep the product depending on how expensive. Is this the wrong mindset? I'm not going to put a label of wrong on it. I'm going to say, essentially, the bigger websites have created expectations they have been pushed down upon the smaller sellers, which can be somewhat onerous because 
if you remember all this stuff with free shipping, free shipping to and free returns, Zappos started that. And people's like, ooh, we like it. We love it. We want that. And if you don't do it, we're going to point and laugh and talk really bad about you. It's essentially you're pushed in a corner because if you don't do it, you're going to get most people are not going to neg you or even give you a bad mark. But all it takes is a few with eBay and you're in trouble. So essentially what you're doing prevents you from getting bad marks, which prevent, you know, extends your longevity on eBay. I would say it's a personal decision, but that stuff drove me crazy. And my partner was even worse than I was about that. Joseph, I'm new to your list of videos. Can you explain a bit more about the power of six? Power of six is a productivity method. You take six things that you have to do. Then you rank them in order of importance. And you work on number one until you uh, are done. And that's it. It's real simple. I mean, there's more to it, but that's the overview. Ricky, my business seems to run me not the other way around. How do you take control of the business instead of it controlling you? Oh, good question. This goes back to goals, strategy, and organization. One of the things I have my consult clients do is frequently I ask them, what kind of life do you want? Because when you start your own business, you have the power not only to start that business, but you also have the power to organize your life in the manner that you want. So I would say after this webinar, sit down with pen and paper and ask yourself what kind of life you want. You may find out that the business you have may not be conducive to the life that you want and then just kind of start working from there. Typically, when we make mistakes or we don't get the outcomes that we like, it's because of a lack of the right information. And you have the opportunity to sit down and just kind of figure this out, because if your business is running you, then it's also running your life. And that's a problem. Chuck, how does one go find good helpers, employees, or et cetera? Ones that you can trust, depend on, and who want money or et cetera, as bad as you. Okay, I can help you with this. Number one, employees want a paycheck. Employers want money. Now, it's like, well, that's the same thing. No, it's not. Paycheck, money is you create a business so you can make more money than the average person, right? A paycheck is to get paid like the average person. The best employees that you're going to find are not going to be like you. This is where many entrepreneurs go wrong. You're looking for someone that's like you, ready to hustle. You want to pay them on equity. And they're like, <laughs> no, partner, I don't want that. I just want my check at Friday at three so I can go get with this big bully girl and drink my whatever I hit this week. That is many people. Give them a good wage, pay them for what they do. And stop thinking they're going to be like you because it's it's going to drive you crazy. It's your business. They're never going to care for it as much as you. I don't care how good the perks are. Now, with that said, if you can find that person and they exist that will come to your business and act like it's theirs and only get pennies and be real happy with that. There are people out there. If you can find one, keep them. <laughs> keep them. Yeah, it uh, seems uh, everyone else can hear me, so maybe I think that's on your end with the audio. Darren, Glennon, I've been buying and reselling as a side hustle for as long as I can remember. But at first of the year, I was laid off after 15 years in corporate America. Now I'm pushing to do it full time to support my family. I buy and sell a little bit of everything on Craigslist at the local flea market, but find it difficult at times to make enough to pay the bills and reinvest. Any tips on increasing sales? Hold on. Hold on. I got to do it. 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 <laughs> I got to do it. I got to do it. I'm gonna let it go. You were. Why you should need to quit your. Okay. I put this video up April 11th and people were laughing. I'm not, I'm not picking on you because getting laid off after 15 years sucks. All right. All right. Uh, essentially. I'm going to expand on this. What Darren is experiencing is going to increase. And it's not because Darren's a bad person or a bad employee. Technology 
is become so good they need less people in the office and on the factory floor and that is going to accelerate what we're experiencing now is nothing compared to what's going to happen in five years which in my mind makes me wonder what are we going to do with these people because there's going to be a lot of people that will not be able to find jobs that will support them and their family it's just not going to happen and then many of these people are going to have degrees not, not as i said not degree but degrees all right now to answer your question directly First of all, you've got to move up to a higher price point items. This is something I see on YouTube. People who, as you said, you sell any and everything. You need to set a price point, $100, $150 items. And it's going to get a little easier because essentially the same effort that it takes to sell a $50 item, it's roughly the same effort it takes to sell a $300 item. So change your price points. Also, have a fire sale. You need more capital. I don't know how many people are in your house. I don't know the deal with uh, your wife, but you need to sit down and have a come to Jesus meeting with the wife and say, look, we're in trouble. And what we need to do is everything in this house that we don't need, that's absolutely mandatory. It's got to go have a big old garage sale or in this, if you live in an apartment, have a Craigslist garage sale where you just have a room with everything in there and have this just sell, get as much money as you can. And then go back to what you're good at, whatever that may be. And figure out a way. Now, notice I said what you're good at, not what you're passionate about. That's one of the things that trips up a lot of people. Figure out what you're good at. If it's service or if it's um, wherever it may be and see if you can make some money with that. I had a person who's a consult client who's good at calligraphy. This isn't the one I was talking about. And uh, she got kind of messed up in an auto accident. You know, she could walk. She's fine. She's going to live. But she can't really do what she was doing. Well, she's really good at calligraphy. I say, well, you know, you've got a gaggle of girlfriends and, you know, some are getting married. Tell them you'll do their invitations. You'll, you'll do them really well and you won't charge a lot of money. And she got overwhelmed by the orders she got. Sitting at home, crippled, and she's making about three G's a month doing uh, calligraphy. So essentially, you know, you've got to dig deep, man. Uh, you know, I hope it works out well for you. Cody from Dallas. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've answered that one. That's uh, copy and paste. Kevin, you're talking about dumping negative people. How did you find, did you go about finding positive people as you network? Any tips? Okay, this is going to be quasi metaphysical. When I started becoming a better person, better people started coming into my life. So essentially, it's not an external situation. It's an internal one. Essentially, work on becoming a better person, calling your own stuff and doing stuff. Just like starting the business creates so much energy around you is ridiculous that you will meet people you normally wouldn't meet. So that's kind of how it happened for me. Jonathan, hey, Glendon, if I read storage auctions to ADZ, what point would I need a consultation for you to take the business to the next level? When you, all right, when you're making some money, because see, this is the thing. Um, I'm, you know, this, this may cost me some money, but it may not. I don't know. The storage auction business is not for everyone. And if you, you know, if you don't have a truck, if you don't have storage, now you're going to have problems because you're going to get overwhelmed. So essentially, you got to kind of figure out, do you even want to do the storage auction business? So my suggestion to you would be go to some auctions, see if you like it. Once you like, oh, I like digging through people's dirty panties. If you're like, yeah, that gives you a woody. Hey, all right, then call me. But go out and actually see if you like this stuff, because there's a lot of romanticism about storage auctions. There's a, this... I, I, I totally know why people do it, because it's a modern day treasure hunt. Well, what other thing can you do? Go out and buy some stuff, spend little to no money and actually find real treasure. You know, some real expensive. It's happened to me several times. I know the feeling. And you're sitting there, your little janky fingers are shaking. It's like, is this a real diamond? And you put the diamond tester on it and it goes zoom. And it's real. Yeah, I mean, that this is hard to re replace. I get it. But make sure you actually like that stuff. 
Rachel, my dude, my brother-in-law is a logger. Keep killing those trees. He has two twins to raise. <laughs> run how much is the consultant fee for optimizing the metrics of a salon all right well my early rate is 450 so it really depends on what you want to do with the salon Chuck do you have a rule for knowing when and how to enter rent own a lease of vehicle or vehicles for your business oh yeah if you're it, it really you got to do the math first of all if um, you are doing a lot of miles, leasing may work out for you because essentially there's no rule of thumb because this kind of goes back like to the consultant deal. Everyone has a different situation and I'll explain mine. We were in Atlanta and most of our halls were not I mean, they were not incredibly long. So the trucks that we leased because my account, my partner was an accountant. She did a lot of this stuff, but she had worked it out where we were riding off the lease and we were getting the miles too because we had three trucks. You have to really, really have an understanding of your business, and you have to. And this is why everybody who's doing certain, you're gonna need a CPA, you're gonna need an accountant. People are like, oh, it's too much money. You may lose more money than you would gain by having the right CPA, because. I purposely think they change the tax laws every year or every few years to drive you crazy. So you need someone that's doing that. But you've got to really have a better snapshot of your business and what you want. Because are you going to have branded trucks? Because there's some places. Now, are you talking about a truck or are you talking about a car? Because there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, why are you renting? I mean, why are you leasing? What are you doing? What kind of business do you have? There's a lot of questions there. Sure thing, Cody. <laughs> Christopher, I have a connect in Vietnam. I can get authentic beats by Dre for 45 shipping included. <laughs> Should I start selling them here in the U.S. online or is there some eagle issues with doing it that way? OK, let's talk about this. Let's say that those beats are real beats. Then more than likely they're stolen. Just, just, you know, keep it real. You, you know, connecting Vietnam could be stealing. What's happening with this branded merchandise is you can sell a few and not too much is going to happen. But you are selling a few dozen or a few hundred. You're going to command the notice of whoever's the authorized reseller of beats. And they're going to contact you. And they're going to ask you where you're getting your stuff. Or what they usually do is they're going to buy your stuff and they're going to actually figure out if it was stolen or not. So just my advice to you, if you're going to do it, not saying you should or you shouldn't, it could be legit. It could be. But I would not put a bunch of those beats on any online platform. If you're going to sell them, you need to go to the flea market. And even there, they have people looking for that stuff. I mean, it just sounds like because I mean, beats are what, 200 bucks. And he's selling them for 45. I mean, like I said, it could be legit. It just doesn't sound or smell right to me. It, it just sounds like trouble. It really does. Chuck, how do you avoid getting screwed or screwing someone on shipping? Say you want to buy something and flip it and selling something you don't want to screw your cluster on the shipping and handling. Uh, typically, shipping has gone up. And also, let's talk about getting screwed. If you charge 25 bucks for shipping and shipping is actually 15, but oh, you had the box. Oh, you had packing tape. I wouldn't really worry about it just because the, most of these sites are not going to let you really charge too much for shipping anyway, especially eBay. They're going to lock you in on the lowest price. And how do you not get screwed? You make sure that you can cover some of the shipping and the actual purchase price. Uh, many people have done it for years. A lot of people who say, hey, it's free shipping. The shipping's in the purchase price. There was a big brouhoo about that for a lot of FB, uh, FBA sellers recently. Actually, there's some people filing lawsuits against uh, Amazon about that. Yes, I'm not kidding. Joe, knowing what to sell on eBay is hard, and I'm trying to sell my photos on eBay. 
Also, finding content to sell is not easy, but I feel this is my best bet to sell on eBay, being that I'm out of work and jobs not good here in this part of California. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not actually going to go there with you, Joe. I'm going to say that once again, you may have talents and abilities that you may make you more money. It's this, this is one of the things that I think is kind of part of our culture that uh, someone pointed this out to me for many people earning money outside of a job is very close to shady. It's a hustle. Something's not right. It is very hard to wrap your mind around it. You may be able to have a talent or ability that you can make three, four grand a month and you just don't appreciate it. <laughs> People looking for a boss to sheep closing. You're brushing the small business owners, Ricky. Thanks. It's already happening. Storage auctions, flea markets, and attracting more. I'm going to tell you something else, too. Uh, my girl's a nurse, and this is something she said, and this is also a consult uh, client said this week, too. He's a respiratory therapist. He said that if you are a nurse right out of school, BSN, RN, four-year degree, very few people are hiring you with no experience. Now, if you have experience, it's a different ballgame. But I want you to think about that. And this goes back into what I'm talking about with this right here. You're it was a point you had a nursing degree. It, they were giving you they were throwing money at you raw and they had to train you. Now, so many people went to nursing school that there can be choosy. And they're going to hire someone with experience because uh, my girl was talking about that this weekend. And she said there was like eight people that came to her job looking and they, no one got the job. She said they will hold out. And then eventually she thinks they're going to, she doesn't want it, but she thinks they're going to offer her the job because she has the experience. So just to let you know, this, these common areas, healthcare, education, firemen, police officers, every one of you have heard of these people in recent years being laid off. This is the first time in history that this has happened. This is the power of technology. Uh, Laquala, uh, I think I watched the video of yours in which the st you say to stay away from eBay. That was a hustle that I was going to start with. Should I scrap that deal or is it okay short term? Thanks. Love, love your work. Thank you. All right, I'm a. This is my deal with eBay. I used to be in love with eBay and I, I became a jilted lover and I hate them. And I just share my experience. If you want to go on eBay, your experience may be different because they have a lot of people watching them. But Everyone has to make their own decisions on what they're going to do with their life. If you want to do it, go ahead. Just understand that it's more complex than people will let you know. So it is 403. And well, you know, there's many people. I put that up on purpose so people could laugh. I am going to send this out for anyone that wants a consult. Also, if you want 30 days for 2500 bucks, I'm going to send that one. That one's going out. And I'm sending this one out. So, let's see. Send all. Okay, this is the deal. It's 404. What I'm going to do is, if you're on the email list, if I do this tomorrow, I'll send out the email before I go to bed tonight. Uh, if I'm going to do it Wednesday, because like I said, I'm kind of leaning toward Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't know yet. Don't know. Just going to see how this thing goes. But if you want to be part of it, just uh, make sure you're on the list. And with that, I want to say thanks to everybody that came out. Appreciate you sharing your evening with me, and I will see you on the good side. Do 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 do.